Hi, this is the eighth video where we're going to do our last project from Scratch Challenge. So it's called Memory Master. So let's see. Put your memory to the test with this mind bending musical game. What is the longest sequence of sounds you can remember? Compete with your friends to see who is the memory master. What you do. When you click the flag, you will hear a sequence of sounds played on the instruments. Listen carefully, then click the instruments to repeat the order correctly and progress to the next level. Be on your guard. The sequence gets longer each time and a single mistake will end the game. So there's a lot going on here, right? There's going to be sounds playing and they have to remember and you have to click the right sprite. So let's begin. Start a new project, call a memory master. Delete the scratch cat. and load a purple backdrop. Is there a purple backdrop? There isn't a purple backdrop. We can always draw our own, so let's go. So, paint. That looks like a purple. So we have to convert to bitmap. To fill the screen. Wow, nice. And let's duplicate. So let's to delete our plain white one. Right click. And this one, let's rename it. Okay, the first one, we rename to start. We could label the things correctly so they understand what they mean. And game over. Text. Oops, exactly. Box over C. Oh no, let's delete this one, let's write it again. Okay. Over. Let's make it larger and center it. Let's choose a different font. Marker. I like pixel. Looks like a video game. Now go to the sprite list. Let's draw some sprites. We're going to call this instructions. So it looks like our instructions is sprite. So then the instructions sprite will show on it will show on the screen and then the players will be able to read it and understand how to play. Select the text. And let's type instructions. Listen to the sound. To keep sounds in the correct order. Uh, sequence. Start one sound, but it's longer each time. Make a mistake and it's
Press the space bar to begin the game. So it looks like in this program, pressing the start like flag won't begin the entire program, right? Because we want to show them instructions first. Center. We want to show, have them read instructions first before starting the game. So we do the space bar to begin the game this time. So it's really important to like consider your the people playing your game and maybe writing instructions for them to be helpful. So let's move it to the center of the stage. What are the backdrops? Let's Make this the default. Remove the sprite. Cool. Now we can move the sprite. It's really hard to to click on the text. Hmm. Why is the G cut off? Let's see what's going on. Maybe move it a little higher then. Now the G isn't cut off. Code. Here we go. Okay. So let's give it some scripts. So when the start button is clicked, Go to front. Go to front layer. Show. Wait until. Key space is pressed, and then we hide. Great. Now we have to make a variables and a list. Let's do checker. Counter. Level. And random. Okay, make sure to leave all of them unchecked so they're hidden except for level. You can also move level to the top. Normal. And let's make a list too. Sound list. And the sauce will uncheck it so the players don't see it. So lists. Making a list is a great way to store a set of information such as numbers or words. Lots of programming languages use lists. They're handy for all sorts of things from creating leaderboards and doing complex calculations to giving sprites artificial intelligence so they look like they're making their own decisions. In Memory Master, we will use our list to store the sounds made by our musical instruments. So lists are a little tricky, but I think it's a really good thing to use. So adding instruments. So let's add some sprites. Drum.
Is there a drum bass? Looks like there's no drum bass. Should we do regular drum? Sure. And what type of sounds does it have? So this only has two sounds. Well, it doesn't matter. So now let's give it some code. So when the player clicks on the drum, checker reports if it matches the correct sound stored at the position on in the list. If it does, the bass drum sound plays and the checker increases by one. So the next sound it checks will be one place further on the list. If the cl player clicks the wrong instrument, the game ends. You can see a similar script for the symbol in full at step 13 on page 32. Okay, that's next. So let's add the script when the sprite is clicked. And if then else statement. So if this happens, then we do this. But if this doesn't happen, then we all then we do this. So operators equal so if the item of sound list item checker equals base so that means if what was supposed to be playing from the sound list if it was actually bass when this is clicked that means it's good right so we should reward the player so we play the sound so broadcast that would be a event message and checker by one so then it will go down its list and then if then The checker is greater than the length of the sound list. Wait one second. And broadcast add sound. We will make sprites in like code that receives the messages we sent, right? Or else they won't do anything. We need to code for what receiving that message does. So switch backdrop. Game over and stop all. Okay, and then what if let's add another script? So when I receive play bass, then we'll play the sound play bass, play the sound bass. Okay, low tom is probably bass. Oh, just a regular one. 
if it says until done, it'll be played until the rest of the game, right? Or if you put this inside of a loop, you play the sound until the loop runs out, right? Okay, now let's add more sprites. Symbol. Cowbell? Oh no, no cowbell. Let's just do regular bell. Snare. Do they have snare? Yes, they do. Now let's add the same scripts you build for the drum bass to each of the new sprites. The easiest way is to click, drag, and drop the sprites from one sprite onto another. This will copy the scripts to another sprite. Okay, so we want to copy both of these scripts. Let's try if it works. Oh, nice, there's a copy now. Okay, let's just drag this one to the bell, and drag this one to the snare. Remember, we'll have to make edits for every one of them, because we have to like, Personalize it for the bell, for the snare. Okay. So when this sprite is clicked, soundless equals symbol. Podcast play symbol this time. Okay, and when I receive the message, play symbol. Let's just do any symbol, crash symbol. This one is for the bell. So when the item on the list that's supposed to be played is bell, broadcast the message, play. Snare. Broadcast the message. Play snare. Snare. Hmm. Okay. So now scripting the list on the stages script area. So this is stage. Clicking the flag clears the information stored in this from the last game. Because we want new scripts for each game. Delete all. Switch backdrop. To the start. The so pressing the code makes the code run. So now it's the start backdrop. Wait until the key space is pressed. Let's 
set level to zero. Broadcast add sound. Now, when I receive the message add sound, we want it will number the instrument sounds from zero to four. When it receives add sound, it picks a random number from zero to four and adds that sound to the list of sounds to play, be played. Then it broadcasts a message, play sound list, which you'll have to create in a broadcast block. So, change level by one. Wait one second. Set random to pick random zero to four. If And then equals one. We add base to the sound list. Now let's repeat it. Duplicate. 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 Whoops, I'm accidentally pressing the code, making it go. Let's press the start button again. So random equals two. Add the symbol. Random equals three. Cowbell. Did I write cowbell or did I write bell? Remember we need our messages to match? So I wrote bell, so I have to keep on writing bell. If you wrote cowbell, then you should write cowbell. If you wrote bell, just whatever you wrote, you have to do it the same. You even need to capitalize and spell it the same. Now let's broadcast one new message. Play sound list. I'm accidentally pressing the code. Whoa, look, we're already level 14. Okay. Let's pause this. Let's start. This is set level to zero. Let me just press this and make it run. It gets messy right here, right? Sweet, now it's level zero. Now give the stage a third and final script. When it receives the play sound list message, the script uses the counter variable to play all of the sounds in the order they were added to the list. Final script, here we go. When I receive play sound list, set counter to one, So the counter will be going down the list. So we wanted to start at one, top of the list. And we repeat this, repeat loop. We repeat until, okay, repeat until senses that 
the counter is longer than the list length. Because it now would mean that it went down the entire list. So a lot of if loops in here, if then loops. So if item okay. item counter Sam this equals base broadcast play base and wait. So we want so they want to play base and then wait until they finish making the sound, waiting waiting until the person makes the decision to like click, right? So let's duplicate this three more times. And we have to like change it up for each instrument. Symbol. L. Snare. Okay, so let's run the project. Oh wait, we probably want to move the sprites to the correct location, right? Let's move it. Nine and press the space bar to press the game yet, so. Okay. Press the space bar. What sound was that? I didn't recognize the sound. Okay, let's check again for code is right because I kept on playing it played so many times. Same sound. So start sound, is that right? Should be play sound. Yep, let's not do start sound. I think I've messed that up so Starting a sound would be like if you had like a long, maybe a music song, long song, then we can do that. So let's try again. Okay. Hmm. We're trying to debug our code right now, right? Play sound until done doesn't seem right either. Let's just do start sound for now. Maybe let's take a look at our list. Is there a problem from my instructions? Oh wait, broadcast and wait. See if we did that. 
Okay, we did do broadcast and wait. Oh, we forgot this code right here. Wait 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, this might be it. Because we definitely want to wait a bit. So. Where did our play sounds go? Did it disappear? Oh, wait. Just move it right here. Let's put it back. And now we're covering our weight settings. Mm -hmm. 0 0.5. Change counter by one. I think this will be really important, right? Probably want to go down our list. Oh no. And Everybody makes mistakes, including me. <laughs> Let's try again. Space phone. Oh, nice, it's working. Oh no, I didn't mess up again. Oh no, I couldn't tell the difference between snares and drums. Probably should familiarize yourself by that. Oh, maybe the instructions should have told you, right? Instructions say like, I'm gonna play the sound drum now, and then you play it for the players so they understand what it means. So there's a lot of ways we can improve this game, right? So looks like we're done with our last game from the book. So I have a lot of things to explain. So now we finished the beginner's book and the challenge book, we should, we know how to do a lot of things now, right? We know how to make variables and lists. Those are pretty complex and we should use them because they make our games nice and cool. And then remember, we even have ex extensions such as video sensing and text to speech. That was really cool. I mean, imagine translating. That'd be cool. You could teach people languages through like a language game. That'd be fun. So, you know, all of we used all of these except for my blocks. I'm just, well, if you want, you could do research on how to make uh, my blocks. Scratch has a lot of information. There's a tutorials. Okay, so there's ideas. See, there's tutorials, getting started. I'm sure there's going to be more complex tutorials, video sensing, animating. So there's a lot of things we can do with Scratch. And we can even look at the Explore. People make their own games. These are like pretty popular games and they get featured on here. So you could press, say, any game. And what's really cool about this is you can see inside and you can remix. So say if you like their game and you just want to make a small change, you could do it. And here, if you see inside, you can see their game, right? You can see all their code. That could really help your, you can learn based on what other people do. Let's see. So soon. We will be making our own games and that will be really cool. It'll be a lot more challenging than say just following instructions from a book. But I think it's a lot more rewarding because you could design it to like whatever you want. So if you have an idea for a helpful game, helpful video, helpful tutorial, then you can make it and it'll be super unique. So when designing your own game based off my own experience, there will be a lot of debugging. You'll, you want the game to do something, you like, so then you, you initially have your initial plan. You put all the right blocks in the place, 
and then you run the game and then you realize you forgot something or wow, this doesn't actually work. And then you have to find out different ways to do it. So it's gonna be a lot of debugging and it'll be challenging, but I think it's really worth it in the end. Okay, so let's complete our last game and then we'll get started on making our own games, right? So good luck. <laughs>